Jen Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is July 4th, 2023, 3.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. Happy Independence Day. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We've had an M1.1 flare around 1 p.m. UTC time. Now, that was from Sunspot AR3354. It's almost on the limb and almost gone, girl. This will probably not be geo-effective, although NASA has just issued a warning. And the warning is about solar dimming. Yes, solar dimming, a whole new term we're going to have to look up. Near Sunspot AR3359, there's hurled a coronal mass ejection towards Earth with it expected to impact Earth on July 7th at 1500 UTC time. All right, here is the actual warning. You can see a geomagnetic storm watch for July 7th UTC. It says a CME erupted from the sun on the 4th of July and an earth-directed component appears likely. Now, I need you all to know that this was not a solar flare, although it looks like we have three sunspots with heavy activity on them. We're going to find out what solar dimming is because they said that that is what generated the halo CME. An all-new term as usual. Let's see if we can find out what's going on and take a look at that sunspot. And also take a look at how active three sunspots are currently. Just to make sure y'all are on board here, they're looking for a G1, G2 on the 7th because of coronal dimming near AR3359. Not a solar flare, not a filament eruption, but coronal dimming. Now, again, a new term not seen by me before. Let's check it out. Here it says coronal dimmings are lower density regions in a star's corona that occur after those areas are depleted of plasma following a CME. If these dimmings indicate CMEs, the latest work represents the largest number of stellar CME detection reported. So this is again an all new term from 2019 that they're throwing at you here. And there's very little information out on it. Let's take a look. We are going to take a look at this sunspot. So no worries. But here is the CME that was ejected from the coronal dimming, which actually occurs after the CME leaves, according to what we just read. It looks like a direct impact on Earth. It looks like a direct impact on Venus and Stereo A and perhaps even Stereo B. Here we're looking at NASA's Iswa Spiral or the Gooder Spiral. So 3359 here that is Delta Gamma now. A little bit more complex. This is still Beta Delta Gamma, but it's almost around the limb. And it is responsible for the M1.1 solar flare that we saw here at 7 UTC time that they say will not be Earth geoeffective. All right, 3354, Gone Girl, 3359, more complex. And 3354 is responsible for the M class 1.4 solar flare. 3359 hasn't flared, but they said the dimming near the sunspot caused a halo coronal mass ejection headed towards Earth. The other sunspot that is so active is 3360. Let's take a look and see if we can see any coronal dimming, although we'll see lots of activity at 3359. All right, over to STO at 193 angstroms and 171 angstroms. We're looking at AR3359, which is going to be here and here. Uh, this is AR3360. Zero that's also very active today, and 3354 that's probably around the limb, but with our luck could still be geoaffected towards Earth. We also have coronal holes we can see coming into play. We're going to play the first one over here, 193 angstroms. Let's look for coronal dimming. Again, in the informational article, it was 
said to be something that happened after a chrome mass ejection. Now they're actually blaming it on coronal dimming. Hmm. I've slowed the speed because I don't know what's going to happen here. Please notice how active 3360, of course, 3354. Let's look for coronal dimming around here. I'm going to take another look. This is going to be the fourth right now. Coronal dimming. I see what looked like a flare here today. There was another flare and a pop. Let's go over to 171. I don't know. Look, it's flaring, very active. They've covered something up there. These people are nothing but trouble. Lots of activity here, as you can see. Obviously, you can see they've covered something up. This can be, there it is, right there. Covered something up. Here, it must have been too visible. Coronal dimming, no. I see coronal flares. I see filament eruptions from this flare, 3359. But no coronal dimming. And all the articles associated with coronal dimming say that something that happens after a CME is released. I don't know if any of these people can get anything right anymore. So I want y'all on the same page as I am. They're looking for a G1, G2 effects. And then down here, publish Tuesday, July 4th, 2023 at 1958 UTC time. Coronal dimming near AR3359 resulted in a coronal mass ejection. Well, that's supposed to be something that happens after a coronal mass ejection, according to all the documents I read, and they were very new as well. In the early UTC hours of the 4th of July, 2023, they give us no time. Lasco C2 chronograph imagers first observed a partial halo CME with a likely Earth-directed component at approximately 4.03.48 UTC time. We actually will take a look at that. Subsequent analysis indicates the likely impact at Earth on the 7th of July, sometime after midday. They said 1500, as you can see above. Magnetic responses are likely to reach the G1 minor geomagnetic storm level with a chance of G2 storm levels if more favorable conditions are observed. Stay tuned to our webpage for updated information and forecasts. Also wanted to show you guys under home about space weather. They talk about coronal holes, coronal mass ejections, but no coronal dimming anywhere in any of the information provided by NOAA or NASA. I had to go to a third party source that said that that was an after effect of a coronal mass ejection, not something that caused one. So more complete, well, you, Use whatever word you'd like to plug in there. God bless you and yours, folks. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.